This week, we uncover a massive mortgage fraud. It's so widespread, it could explain why British house prices have gone on rising for so long. I cannot think of a fraud when so many people have lied about so much money. Mortgage brokers have been encouraging house buyers to break the law to get massive mortgages. It is lying, and that's what you have to do. No, all that says we walk in the park. Buyers who've got their mortgages this way could end up with criminal records. For the brokers who egged them on, it could be even worse. It's not a question of not going to prison, it's a question of how long. With money from this fraud now pouring into the housing market, we reveal how some of Britain's biggest lenders have helped create mortgage madness. Andy Ashford lives in Ealing, a house price hotspot in West London. He's a teacher earning £30,000 a year and has 25000 to put down as a deposit. Andy's now renting, but he dreams of buying a place of his own. I was born in Ealing and for the last 29 years I've been living in the area. My life is here, my family are here. So work and life tend to sort of revolve around the same place. We get brochures like this through the door all the time around here um, from estate agents in the area showing us the sort of things we could get if we had the money. I always think of it as a bit like when it's sort of Christmas time and you were looking through all the little catalogues to see all the lovely toys you wanted but then realised you weren't going to be getting any of them because you couldn't really afford them. What's your budget to be able to buy? We're looking at around about 140,000 mark. What are you able to get for that sort of money? Not very much. Um, in fact, nothing. A studio flat in the outskirts of Ealing may just come in under that, that amount. However, one bedroom, two bedroom places are sky high now, sort of over the 200,000 pound mark. Andy Ashford isn't alone in finding himself priced out of the market. The average home in Britain now costs almost six times the average wage. Experts are baffled. With prices out of the reach of so many people, the market should have cooled. Over the past three years, forecasters predicted a gentle rise in prices. That didn't happen. House prices rocketed. Why they rose so sharply is a mystery. Prices are now at record highs, but still here in Ealing, flats are often snapped up almost as soon as they hit the market. So there's certainly no shortage of buyers. The question is, how are they managing to raise the money? Since nobody could explain where the money was coming from to keep prices rising, we went undercover to see if we could find some answers. A member of our team visited the group of estate agents clustered round Ealing Station. We posed as a first-time buyer, and we said we had a salary of £30,000, the same as Andy, and a £35,000 deposit. So, how could we raise the £220,000 it could cost us to buy a flat in Ealing? We started out at the Ealing branch of Rolf East. Here we were referred to a mortgage advisor based in their office. Hi, I'm here to see Patrick. Nice to meet you, mate. Thank you. Hey, Sorry. Patrick Cheers. Dalton started out by telling us what Andy Ashford had already discovered, that in Ealing, the salary of £30,000 doesn't get you very far. Every single lender in the country, on a single application, will give you three times your salary. Right. Which is £80,000. Right. <laughs> Some... 3.25. Yeah. I'm not going to try and work that out. Right. <laughs> Some 3.5. Every time we go up a quarter of a percent, though, your pool of lenders gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Right, okay. Generally, four times yeah. is your maximum. Okay. It's what's called your borrowing potential. Right, okay. 120,000. Bad news. £120,000 plus our deposit is 155000 and there's next to nothing on offer here for that. 
But then Patrick suggested an alternative, what's called a self-certification mortgage, where you state your earnings, and unlike a normal mortgage, the lender doesn't check what you claim. With the self-certification, you've got to be a bit cheeky. Okay, it means putting down an income that you might not necessarily actually earn. Right, okay. In but they take your word for it. Fine. That's it. In this case, how much would I have to say? Let's have a look. We're on 184 we're looking to borrow. Yeah. Let's just have a look at Morgan Rock's income multiple. You ready for that? 52,000. So, yeah, well, I've gone up in the management world. Oh yes, you've had a huge promotion and a pay rise and a nice new car. Right, okay. And I, I have to write that figure in, do I? Um, yes. Right, okay. But again, uh, it's something they don't check. Then, so this is all okay, Patrick, yeah? Perfectly fine. Right. Thank you very much. For your it was extraordinary. We'd just been advised to lie on a mortgage application form. That lie makes an amazing difference. It gets us another £65,000 on our mortgage, so now we can buy for £220,000. And for that kind of money, there's plenty to choose from. But what Patrick didn't tell us is that by lying about our income, we'd be breaking the law. A person who fills out a form knowingly, um, entering a false statement about his, his income or his occupation, is at risk of going to prison. It is a serious offence. The type of offences which uh, would normally be uh, committed by someone doing this would be obtaining a money transfer by deception or false accounting, and they carry maximum penalties of between seven and ten years each. For someone in Andy Ashford's position, desperate to buy, lying to get a mortgage might be tempting. We showed him what Patrick had said. 184. 184. Yeah. He was on the same salary as you. That's mad. Oh my God! So he's now going to say he earns fifty-two thousand a year. So what do you think about that, Andy? I can't believe it. Actually, it's frightening that I'm seeing somebody who works for an estate agent actually recommending it as an option. I had no, absolutely no idea that that sort of thing was possible. You can't get a big enough mortgage to buy what you want. No. Would you be prepared to lie about your income to get a bigger mortgage? It's a tough one. Um, but then my option, my, you know, my potential to say no to that is, is getting smaller and smaller because I'm being priced out of the market. So if it was the only way to get on the property ladder, I'd say I'd probably have to. Even if a borrower managed to avoid getting caught, there's another major drawback. Our fraudulent mortgage is over six times our income, far bigger than the normal multiples lenders allow. Dr Desmond Fitzgerald advises regulators and bankers round the world on financial risk. So how risky is a mortgage of six times our income or more? If you have a three times multiple and interest rates went up one, one and a half percent, you might end up paying 25% of your after-tax income um, in mortgage payments, and you can live with that. Um, but if we have a six times multiple or more, then you end up effectively perhaps paying 50, 55% of your after-tax income in mortgage repayments. And I guess a lot of people would find that very difficult, if not impossible, to manage. So if that fraudulent mortgage didn't land us in prison, it could ruin us financially. But there's another potential victim of this crime. The housing market itself. Because the more illicit cash is injected into the market, the more prices are inflated. Clearly, if only a handful of people did this mortgage fraud, the effect on house prices would be imperceptible. If a lot of people did it, the boost to prices would be significant. So the question is, was our experience this time a one-off? To find out, we visited another nine of the estate agents in the centre of Ealing and spoke to the mortgage advisers they recommended. Some advisers were linked to the estate agents, others worked for separate firms. At town ends, we were also advised to break the law and fraudulently exaggerate our £30,000 income. 
as long as they see an income figure that fits with their income multiples, right? They're not going to ask too many questions, right? So what do I have to write then? We'd need to put you down at about fifty-four grand. At Kinley, Folkhart and Hayward, we were told lying about our income on a self-certified mortgage was our only realistic option. Oh, Angus, sorry, because <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <Sorry. laughs> if you don't go self-cert, yeah, okay. The lens we want to see, your pay slips, P60, bank right. statements, yeah. and, that, and those all show 30 yeah. grand. Yeah. With a self-certified mortgage, you pay a higher interest rate, but those troublesome income checks aren't made. They are saying, OK, well, we accept what you, what you, whatever you put down on the application form, we accept, and we don't want to see any proof of it. Right, OK, so what would I have to put down on the income thing? What is it, 185? Yeah. Divide that by 3.5, you'd have to find around about 53 grand. 53 grand, OK. At Bairstow Eves Countrywide, Britain's biggest estate agency group, when the advisor told us we'd have to boost our income to 53,500, we said we were concerned. Yeah, I mean, I find the whole self-certificate being uncomfortable. Yeah. Just, you know, the idea that I'm, I'm meant to essentially lie on my yeah. form is, is, is difficult. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, don't get me wrong, we can send the stuff up there and we can gloss it up to make, you know, at the end of the day, it's not guaranteed, but we can gloss it up to make sure, you know, it's going to look very easy, you know, look very convincing. And if we weren't prepared to lie? One other option. Um, have you heard of the National Law? <laughs> <laughs> Hart's advisor was disarmingly frank about what he was advising. You'd have to state your income to 56,000. And it's not, you think it's lying. You're joking. It is lying, and that's what you have to do. Advisors recommended by Barnard Marcus, JAC Strattons, Northfields, and Robertson, Smith and Kempson all took us down the self-certification route and all offered us vastly more buying power than we could have raised with an honest mortgage application. You would have to put down on the application form, it's 50 grand. 52,000. Your income's 56,000. We'd need to put you down at about 54 grand. When we began this investigation, we didn't know for sure if this fraud was happening at all. But of the 10 mortgage advisors we visited here in Ealing, no fewer than nine recommended self-certified mortgages, which would require our income to be grossly exaggerated. It was a revelation which we found almost incredible. The self-certified mortgages at the heart of this fraud were originally devised for self-employed people with erratic earnings. At first, their accountants had to confirm the incomes borrowers claimed. But as competition increased, checks fell away, and now even salaried employees can get one. There are conditions. You have to put down a large deposit, and you pay a higher rate of interest. So lenders are unlikely to lose. You get a higher income as a lender from these types of mortgages than you do from ordinary mortgages. The buyer of the house has to put down a deposit, let's say 15%. That effectively means if he can't keep up the payments and the house is repossessed, the lender um, can sell that house for 85% of the price the original purchaser paid and still have no loss. The original purchaser, of course, has lost his house and lost his deposit. So, though borrowers are taking most of the risk, more and more are being persuaded to do it. About one in three mortgages that I do nowadays are self-cert. Really? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... that's so not everybody way. is that's doing the it. Only way. That's the only way people can get on the, on the housing market, basically. I've done it for myself, my personal friends. Um, just remember what we put on the form. Yeah. And just make sure the mortgage is always paid. So you, you, you've done the self-certification route yourself and you've never had any comebacks or anything like that? I know it all works, so it's a walk in the park. Um, but may I ask how much you put down? I've put down 100 grand. I don't know. Sales of self-certified mortgages are growing fast. 10% of all new lending is now self-cert. The question is, how much of it is based on lies? We showed Desmond Fitzgerald how commonplace this fraud seems to have become. He believes it helps explain the house price mystery. Yeah. <laughs> Over the past two years, most forecasters, including myself, um, 
expected the housing market at best to stabilise and more likely to fall. Instead, it's powered ahead. Now, clearly, if there is this extra flow from these fraudulent self-certified mortgages, that will push hundreds of millions of extra cash flow into the housing market. This will mean that houses become even less affordable. This will mean that more and more people, therefore, are tempted or take out these fraudulent self-certified mortgages, and that will push yet more money in the housing market. So you get this sort of self-feeding frenzy, a real bubble effect. In such a frenzy, people like Andy Ashford end up losers. If a lot of people do this, then that's going to be a lot more money into the property market, and that's going to push prices up. It's awful that I'm being... order to be able to live to live, i.e. where I grew up. But is it only where prices are high that the market is corrupted and borrowers are turning to fraud? What about parts of the country where prices are lower? In Manchester's popular southern suburb of Didsbury, property costs around half what you'd have to pay in Ealing. Because prices here are so much lower, you might think there'd be no need for fraud. Nonetheless, of the seven mortgage advisors we met in Didsbury, three advised us to lie about our incomes to get bigger self-cert mortgages. So here too, we would have ended up with illicit extra cash to pour into the housing market. For the brokers who are advising borrowers to break the law, the consequences could be serious. A broker, particularly if the broker is getting a commission for, for this, and is doing it over a number of years, repeatedly, is certainly going to go to prison, and go, going, going to go to prison measured in years, not months. A broker is regarded as a, in a position of trust. He has breached that trust. And what is more, the broker may be said to have invited the borrower to commit a... Uh, ...not having to prove your income, they don't want to pay it, they don't want a bank statement. The lenders have created the market. Uh, to be honest with you, it's, it's kind of strange, because you don't have lenders and say, oh, they go, yeah, well, we don't need proof of the income. Right. But, no, no, but we don't need it. Right. You know, it's, it's... Lenders are pushing self-certified mortgages hard, and competition's getting fear. Not everyone a self-certified mortgage. Most lenders demand that you put down at least 15% deposit. The ad is part of the Zurich Advice Network, a group with thousands of financial advisors across Britain and an office next to the Ritz in the heart of London. During this investigation, one Zurich advisor And we could end up in deep financial trouble if any other and out the the lender income checks, it's for him to adjust a lie about our thirty thousand pounds to put down I mean whatever you want to borrow divided by three point five. So say, say actually, oh, say you go for ninety-five percent of two hundred. Uh, so that's one hundred and ninety divided by three point five. So your earnings have to be say fifty-five thousand. Okay. So you think it's it, that? That's all right. Yeah. Just see. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I haven't got your conscience. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I have got a conscience, but you, you're the one who has to make the decision whether you want to go for it. But um, at the end of the day, that's, that's, it, it works, it's fine. But who is the lender offering this ever so attractive mortgage to people with just a 5% deposit? You might think, oh my God, you know, they must be a real fly-by-night company or something. But they're not. They're the massive lender. It's actually Bank of Scotland, it's, uh, part of the Halifax Group. Really? Major lender. Uh -huh. Who gives you extra? The Halifax Bank of Scotland Group is Britain's biggest mortgage lender. Who 
They're not the only lender in the self-certified business, but they are the most aggressive. During this investigation, brokers have advised us to lie on applications for self-certified mortgages from the Bank of Scotland, the mortgage business, and Birmingham Midshires. They're all part of the Halifax Bank of Scotland group. In their latest annual report, Halifax Bank of Scotland's chief executive, James Crosby, insists that HBOS is a responsible lender. Asked if he was part of the fraternity that are lending based on four times salary, James Crosby replied, Not as a general rule. Almost all lending in the UK by mortgage lenders, not just us, is on the same income multiples as were applied in the late 1980s. So, does James Crosby really not know that brokers are getting borrowers far more than the traditional three and a half times multiple by exaggerating their incomes? And what if Britain's biggest mortgage lender was selling its own mortgages this way? That'd surely be a sign the housing market is rotten to the core. Ads for Birmingham Midshires, one of HBOS's major brands, are certainly suggestive. There are no checks on what borrowers claim. We decided to call the number on the ad to see what we could get. Thank you for calling Birmingham Midshire Direct Loans. Your call may be recorded or monitored for security and training purposes. Hello, my name's Michael. Yes, I'm, I'm phoning for some mortgage advice. I told the call centre advisor that I earned £34,000. How much, I wondered, could I borrow? I mean, the maximum we'd be able to raise on 34 um, income at the moment is 110,500. 3.25 of your income. So far, so good. The advisor is sticking to the official income multiples. But does she know how I could borrow a lot more? I, I don't understand that because I've... The reason I'm calling you is I've got a friend who's got a mortgage with you and he earns just about the same as me. He's got a much bigger loan from you guys. OK, maybe that he's gone through a broker on a self-certified mortgage. But do I need to go to a broker? I mean, if a broker can do it, why can't you do it? Can you do it directly with me? No, because you've just told me that your income is 34,000 per annum. But my salary is 34,000. Yep. I understand that some people, will, even though they're earning 34, some people sip and say that they're earning 60. So we can do 3.25 of this 60. Is that right? I mean, yeah. Especially with when, when they go through a broker. On the telephone, we just turn around and say, no, you can only raise this amount. The telephone call recorded, you see. So the people at Birmingham Midshire's call centre certainly know the score. But what happens when conversations aren't recorded? We travel to Birmingham to visit Birmingham Midshire's High Street branches and meet HBOS's own mortgage advisors face to face. We thought it almost inconceivable that at the main city centre branch we'd be invited to lie about our £18,000 salary. Hello. 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 How are you? You're Very right. well, thank you. Hello. We were wrong. Thank you. So what yeah. do you put on the form as my income? About £18,000. Well, I'll fill out your form for you. Don't worry about that side of things. Right. Okay, that, that's me that does that, yeah? Um, so that's that mortgage would be over five and a half times our salary, vastly higher than the traditional multiples Gurdjieff's boss claims his company sticks to. <laughs> In the Solihull branch, the advisor told us that to get the mortgage we wanted, we'd need to almost double our salary. Oh, have you? Fine. No so I'm being a bit naive. Uh, basically, I write it down or say I'm a position out. That more also be for around five and a half income. At here we have a mortgage of almost six and a half times our true. So it's very good to that. But even that's nothing compared to what some borrowers have got. Yeah. Back at the city centre branch, we were told about one borrower getting around ten times his income. Yeah, I had this guy come in last week and he bought a £1,000 house because his income was about just the early 30s. It wasn't like, mm. you know, exceptionally good. So he was having a mortgage of 340 and um, to borrow that, I had to show him to have an income of about 104. He wishes he did. <laughs> 
So all three, bitch boss. You know I'm the man who understands mortgage. Mr Crosby wasn't prepared to appear in this programme to answer those questions. Instead, HBOS gave us a statement. It announces that three of their Birmingham Midshire's mortgage consultants have been suspended following information received from this programme. The statement also says, Birmingham Midshires has with immediate effect temporarily ceased offering self-certification mortgages through its branch network. The company has launched a detailed investigation into the issue and has recalled all its advisers for intensive training on the proper use of self-certification. Other mortgage advisers we exposed in this programme are also being investigated by their companies. The companies we spoke to told us that this abuse of self-certification is against their policies and training procedures. Several of the advisers involved have already been suspended. Now this scandal's been uncovered, it's likely the flow of illicit cash from this board will be stopped. That could have a big impact on the housing market. The stop and interest rates in the rows, then I think you could see a really big downward week, the Biden prediction will be a long-term rise in interest Ominous news who've lied to borrow huge levels of their incomes. Repayments could rocket while the value is its falls. But at least some will benefit. People like Andy Ashford may finally be able to buy a payment without having to resort to crime to get it. Next program, celebrities' favorite diet is sending shockwaves to the food industry. Even health concerns can't stop this million-pound business. That's a fat profit.